I'd just like to uh, welcome you along to this edition of Bunkai Strategies. So our technique of the week this week is to take the Koshi Gamai and the hand coming up and out for uh, Tate Shuto Uki, which you might have seen in the likes of Bat Eye Dye. And so this particular technique is a nice one for us to look at. And I'm joined here by Steve White, who's going to very kindly lend his body to uh, the experience. What you've got to say is, why am I stood around like this in the first place? Well, it's, it's got to be that there's an attack going on. So in this situation, we're going to have that big right hook come in. I'm going to meet that and bring it down to here. And then the set of his wrist creates the Koshigamai position. What you see is that most parts of it are very, very useful. The elbow is keeping pressure on top of Steve's elbow. The hikite hand, the pulling hand, has the arm secure at my hip. And the hand set at right angles is to set his wrist at right angles. So from here, we could just try and maintain it. The only trouble is people tend to fight you. And if you try and stand still for too long, you'll eventually get the strength together to come up and take that out. So we can either keep it on by putting it on, pulling it off, putting it on, putting it off, or we can change the grip, take control here, and then use this hand to wipe along the arm, keeping the contact, and then get the strike in this way. Now it's going to arrange the head very nicely for the next technique to take the jaw off, capture, and set. We ought to be able to win from there. So what you'll have noticed with the demonstration there was that I'm actually working quite gently. Um, mainly that's because we're using anatomically vulnerable positions to strike. And when we turn the face and just do this, that's us being nice. What you'll see though is that Steve can't actually resist the turn of the head. So by having this seized and pushing against here, Steve can try and resist if I push up here. It's a battle to turn because of the target we can actually be, afford to be gentle because that's going to achieve what we want without us having to harm a training partner. What we really want to do though is smack it. So the problem with uh, doing that to a training partner is, as we said, damage. So what we do is we look at the, the strike to the body instead of to the target itself. So up here on the shoulder, Steve's going to be fairly strong. There's little to damage there, although it's not impossible. And if I, if I do that, and turn his head like that, then I get a result. But if I turn it like this, and we see that that going in against somewhere that's even more vulnerable would have an even bigger result. As such, we've got to tone down the power when working with a training partner. And that's why you can go full speed and power only when you do the kata on its own or against the pack. We demonstrated the technique there for you from the old big right hook because it is the most common attack in the world and we achieved this position to begin the technique um, and then we could also work it from here and come off this way and get the same effect. We could work it from uh, the idea that he comes barreling at us with some kind of charge to come off and do the same thing again. My question for you is is there really any kind of attack, realistically, that we could expect to happen where we couldn't have this as our technique? 